is brought to you and supported by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental. And if you are in Australia and you have plans to visit the AOG Energy at the Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre, why not visit my sponsor, Craig International, during the three-day event? They'll be on stand G7, and I have no doubt they'll be very much looking forward to meeting you and having a chat. Tomorrow, at Putaudry, Aberdeen, face a huge Scottish Cup quarter-final tie against Derek McInnes' Kilmarnock. Kickoff is an early one. It's at 12.15. Our record against Kilmarnock this season has been terrible. It's about time we put the wrongs right. Just a reminder of the Scottish Cup quarter-final draw. On Sunday at 17.30, Hibs play host to Rangers. Before that, at Celtic Park, Celtic host Livingston. Kickoff is at 14.30. And then on Monday evening, we conclude the Scottish Cup quarterfinals in Greenock as Morton take on Hearts. Kickoff there is 19.45. And the Scottish Cup semi final draw will be made directly after that game. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? A very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV this Friday night. So, this is the pre recorded show. Countdown to kickoff as we look ahead to our Scottish Cup quarterfinal tie against Kilmarnock on Saturday. A game. I'm particularly looking forward to because I just have a funny feeling that we might actually do okay. I don't know why, I just have a feeling that we're going to turn up. I really hope I'm right. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a sixth sense, whether I'm just being overambitious, whether I'm being too positive. I don't know. I've just got a feeling it could be our day. It just depends, obviously, how we turn up on the day. So, what have we got on the show? Usual. Housekeeping, bits and pieces, match stats, Neil Warnock's quotes. Um, a little bit later, I'll be reading out your comments, as I always do. So, thank you for leaving your messages on my social media pages. Some very interesting thoughts about the game and about how you guys are currently feeling. And, a little bit of fun later, absolutely delighted to welcome to the show Hall of Fame member, an Aberdeen legend, Theo Schnelders. He did his question and answer quick fire session. It's a lot of fun. We're bringing that to you a little bit later. It's a beautiful day or a beautiful evening as the sun is setting here on the German Austrian border. So I hope it's not too glary for you. Right. I thought we'd start tonight by sort of trying to predict the team news. Should we take a quick look? Because this is kind of roughly what I think Neil will do tomorrow. So I've got a feeling he'll play a 4-2-3-1. I could be completely wrong. So, four across the back, I don't think he'll go three. Surely not. Um, and I've got a feeling that Angus MacDonald will drop out. I kind of hope I'm wrong, but I've just got a, fa I've got a bad feeling about it. Then I think Graham and Connor will play just in front of the, the two. Killian Phillips to get more of a sort of a free reign um, in the hole, sort of almost playing like a number 10 role, but I think he'll drop back once Kilmarnock have possession, then I really hope he keeps our width because I think our width and Paisley really paid benefits. Duke on one side, Junior on the other, with Bojan playing just in front of the two of them. But what I'm hoping is that either Duke or Junior will basically support Bojan. So it almost becomes a two. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So that's what I'm thinking. Right, so let me get Neil Warnock's quotes in for you. Because obviously it was a big week after the disappointment of what happened in Paisley. And obviously part of his job this week was to lift the boys. So this is what he had to say. So you do get kicked in the teeth at times in football and you've just got to bounce back. It's how you react. Yes, you get down for 24 hours, but then the manager and the staff have got to be spot on and then the players have got to respond, and they did that. They've been very positive this week. I've been really pleased with them. There was no sulking on Monday or Tuesday, just straight into it. Which is exactly what, I've got to be honest, I kind of expected to happen. I expected the boys to obviously be absolutely gutted, give it 24 hours, 
and then just basically crack on with it because they've got no choice. You know, I, I, you can have two or three days, um, you know, where, where you're going to be down and you, you might overthink things, but they have no choice but to get on with it because obviously we want to make progression in the cup. It is our only chance of getting anything out of this season because we are obviously right in the thick of it, down the wrong end of the table. So it could be respite for us. Um, just let me drag the other items in for you while I'm here. I'm almost done. Um, just two more items to get in. Uh, where is it? There's that one. And then let me just drag Theo in for you. So that's ready to go. Uh, Theo, 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 where are you, my boy? You're around about here somewhere. There he is. Okay, right. That's the timeline. Now, full up. Right, so let's get to the match stats. Let's have a look at that. So, did you know Kilmarnock have obviously defeated Aberdeen in all three of the meetings between the two teams this season with an aggregate score of 5 0? Should Kilmarnock beat Aberdeen for a fourth consecutive match, it would be the first time they've achieved this since four wins on the trot against us in 2010. Bojan Majowski has scored three of Aberdeen's four goals in the competition this season. John Beaton is the referee and on VAR is Andrew Dallas. Now, if you cannot get to the game tomorrow, check out Dolly Digital's front cover of Red Match Day programme. Isn't it an absolute beauty? It's basically been inspired by the 1954 Scottish Cup final, which we lost against Celtic 2-1. But isn't that cover absolutely magnificent? The weather for tomorrow. It's going to be cold. It's going to be cloudy. And the winds could be gusty. That's what I've been told. That's what I've read on the internet. But of course, anything can change. So they're expecting at kickoff it to be 5 degrees. The lows will be 4. The highs will be 6. So as always, if you're heading to Pataudry, keep yourselves nice and warm. So I think what we'll do now is let's read out some of your comments which have come in on my social media pages in the past 24 hours or so and then we'll get to Theo Schnelders. So David Scott has said, I'm hoping we can get a result more than anything else. Surely sooner or later the players give us a performance to be proud of. Erica Mitchell said, I would like to see us win this and get to the semi-final for a start. Come on boys, forget about everything else for a moment and focus on this game. Ian Buckingham said, let's get behind the team and give the boys the backing they need to get through this tie. I want another trip to Hamden. Gavin Goodbrand has said, what's next in Warnock's Tombola? Back four is a must. We have been at best when Barron, Palvara, Clarkson play. Admiofsky, McGrath leaves two, but will be usual five changes probably. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Cameron Young has said, hopefully get a result against Killy and get back to Hamden and into a semi-final. Hopefully Warnock puts out a decent 11 and not an 11 that just sits back tomorrow. Completely agree. Darren Kemp said, I think he's going to pick the team based on height this week. Yeah, he very much could do that. So, you know, even though I, I sort of predicted the team, for argument's sake, you know, Angus could very much be in there. Um, Dante could also very much be in there for his physicality and for his uh, for his height. So, you know, which means that I, I would think that Connor would possibly drop out. Um, so, yeah, we will find out at 11.15 tomorrow morning. Don Morrison said, I have a feeling that we could win this tie. Not sure why, but we're overdue a good performance, and I think this might be the one. I'm really hoping playing at home in front of a big crowd with the prospect of being in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup might be the catalyst to turn things around. But looking at it from the negative side, if we do lose again, it's going to be anybody's guess where that leaves Neil Warnock. But as I said, I really hope it doesn't come to that. I think that's why I'm trying to be as positive as I can about the game tomorrow because I don't want us to be in that situation of what if. Um... Because then it's just, for me, it's just going to get very, very messy. And it will, you know, the, the toxicity will just continue around the feeling of the fans and the club. And I just don't think it's very healthy. Um, look, I don't know what the ticket sales are. I don't know the actual ticket sales for tomorrow. Um, but what I have been told is that it's lower than normal. 
Um, so, you know, you could put that down to a number of different reasons. Um, but whatever happens, like, you know, those that turn up and those that are watching on from afar, I'm sure will give the, the lads the absolute backing that they need to help us, to help them get over the line. Ian Bruce, when we win against Killy, will this be a bigger upset than Motherwell's win at Ibrox last week going by recent performances? David Main said, same width and intensity that we started with last week, hopefully. It's going to be a typically hard McInnes team to beat and the team will need to get behind them to help try and save the season. Warnock's last chance, maybe, he said. Doug Smith said, I'm quietly optimistic. Why? I don't know. You see, it's fascinating, isn't it? That so many of us think that we could get, you know, we could get over the line in this game, but we just don't know why. Um, we can't get back to how we played early on, but it must be a back four with McDonald's first name on the team sheet. It will be a battle, but 11 players must step up. I really hope it's Angus that starts tomorrow. Um, and if it was Angus, it's, it'll be either... It'll be either Richard or Stefan that drop out because I think Nicky will be fine at right on the right side and I, I think he's got to bring Jack McKenzie in. I really do. Because I just don't think Richard Jensen... I just... I'm not sure. I'm just... I don't think he's overly comfortable in that position. Uh, Stanley Roddy has said, we need to stay in the cup. Otherwise, I can see the fans disappearing in droves. Something is needed to keep them focused apart from a relegation battle. Gordon Ritchie said, hello everybody, important game tomorrow, we need a win to get the confidence up to kickstart the rest of the season, let's get behind the team and support the team from now until the end of the season. Fraser Gunn has said, it's a massive game, as they all are, but this is as big as they come, win here could give us a much needed bounce, defeat here and things could get even worse, he is pleading, no back three, put the strongest team out, need to put pressure on them from the start because if we let them settle, it could be a long afternoon. Derek knows how to play us and will look to frustrate and out-battle us. Let's be up for it, Dons, and leave everything on the pitch. No regrets. Martin Smith said, won't lie, not feeling confident about the match, hoping to see a back four, four in midfield and two up top. No individual mistakes, every player busting a gut to be first to the ball, a bit of width, speed of play, bravery on the ball, take your man on with the knowledge that your teammate is there to cover for you. Just fight for each other and show some pride in the club and the job you do. Excellent post, Martin. Karen O'Connor has said, let's do this and kickstart our season. Time to give a performance and play for the jersey. There's decent players in amongst them. Forget about the league for the day and go for it. 4-4-2 and stick it until the final whistle. Warnick, that means don't take our wingmen off. Come on, you Reds. Let's do this dandies. Right. There's plenty more comments, which uh, I will read out in just a moment. But first... Let's have a bit of fun with Theo Schnelders. So I caught up with him from his home in Holland and uh, we did our quick fire question and answer session. And again, like I do with all the lads, I said to him, you can answer the questions as you see fit. You can give me one word answers or you can digress and give a little story. So welcome to the show, Theo Schnelders. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, Eddie. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Lovely to see you. I really hope you're ready for your quick fire question and answer session. I don't know. Good man. Right. First question. Where did you stay when you first moved to Aberdeen? We moved to, uh, we stayed for three, three months in Yattel. Mm -hmm. And then we were looking around for houses. And um, the first thing was that, uh, my agent, Tom van Dahl, said, well, better rent a place. But Bobby Morrison made sure that we bought a house. So we moved to the Brummel Avenue. We stayed there for eight years. Had a lovely time there. Great neighbors. Very nice. Right. Who impressed you the most in training? Well, it's quite funny because, I mean, at Twente, we trained with... 16, 18 in the first team squad. But when I arrived, um, 
everyone was together. First team, the young boys. So it was a group of 30, 40 players. And the first two weeks, I uh, was just running and running. Hardly saw a ball. And um, But I think after that, it was yeah, Charlie Nicholas and Jim Bett. They were very impressive. Who would you rather have an argument with? Alex McLeish or Willie Miller? <laughs> Well, I won't make a difference, but I can tell you, Willie was, he made his point, end of story. But, but Alec was always, you should have done this, you should have done that. And uh, so that you could have an argument with Alec. <laughs> <laughs> How often in one season would you change your gloves? Um, oh. I've depended how the weather was, but I think normally three, four games. Okay. And then you, you would bring them into training. Ah, okay. So the gloves you wore in training, you also wore in the matches? No, 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 no. Just say the one you, you wore uh, for the games. Ah. So three, four games, they were going back into training. And then you had your new ones ready uh, for the next Understood. few games. Understood. When you first moved to Aberdeen, what was your first car? Well, that's quite a story. Uh, <laughs> because when I was at Twente, we didn't have sponsored cars. And um, but the last couple of years was always talk about uh, Twente. Oh, next year we're getting new cars. So players had brochures and but I never had a car, sponsored car at Twente. So then I moved to Aberdeen and the sponsor was uh, our sponsor, my sponsor was Sandy Thane. Oh, yeah. For Rui. yeah. Uh, so I went over and had a look and I chose the Foxhall Astra GTI. Oh, nice. It was, it was a really nice car. But Ian Target thought it was not a good idea. He thought it was a bad combination. A sports car with a football <laughs> player, insurance was too high. And um, so I went over to the boss, Alex Smith, and I said, Boss, well, I love this car and uh, blah, blah, blah. And he said, hey, well, I'll get that sorted. So <laughs> in the end, I got the car, the one I wanted. But the thing was, we got uh, plates on the side with your name. Yeah. So it said, Sandy Thane from Inferuri, sponsored Theo Snelders, Aberdeen FC. And you felt always embarrassed when you were driving the car around in the center. But we had, luckily, we had also plates to, to cover your name. Uh, but I love the car. It was some story uh, before I got it. <laughs> okay. Which save do you think was the better save? The one against Ali McCoist in the Skull Cup final, the one against Dunfermline at East End Park, or Anton Rogan's penalty in the Scottish Cup final? For you, which was the better save? I think, well, for, for the memory, it's, yeah, it will always be Anton Rogan's penalty save, but... I think the most spectacular one was the one from uh, Ross Jack. Yeah. I think against the Firmland. Yeah. It was also a Scottish Cup because it was, yeah, yeah, double save. So that made it more special. I think also reaction and then coming up quickly because it went to the inside post, went to the other side. And and I'm thinking now, when you, I mean, I'm 60 now and you think, oof. <laughs> At that time, could I do it? Couldn't do it now anymore, but uh, <laughs> I think most spectacular one will be uh, the one from Ross Jack. Okay. Um, did you have any superstitions? I did. Um, I took always uh, responsible for my own tools, like the boots, my gloves, and the socks. And Miriam had always, I always loved the, the white socks and yeah, if they were going with all the socks into the tumble uh, in the washing machine, then yeah, they wouldn't get that white anymore. Yeah. So Miriam did always a hand wash. So I had always my own bag. Most of the players had only the toilet bag. But uh, in the beginning, it's, it's, uh, people were always confused. They were always <laughs> saying, Tell you, what, what sandwiches do you take with you? Because I had always, yeah, it was just a... As I did always, I, I didn't want to rely on people putting the wrong stuff in the hampers. Uh, and the thing was, I always asked Teddy 
uh, Scott for uh, did he put all the stuff in the hamper for the warm up and an extra jersey if, for instance, if it, if it was raining. Yeah. Um, so it was always my preparation before the game uh, had to be perfect as well. Okay. Did you have a favourite pre-match meal? Well, if you look back now, what um, what we got for pre-match at Twente, that was thinking back, it was ridiculous. We were getting always two hours, two and a half hours before the game, fillet steak and orange juice. I oh. mean, it's the worst thing, which would, <laughs> I think a steak takes eight hours to digest. And uh, uh, so at Aberdeen, it was mostly uh, had chicken okay. um, before the game, chicken and toast. That was chicken and toast. <laughs> toast as well, yeah. <laughs> What a combination. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a favourite place to go out in Aberdeen? Yep, yeah, usually um, it was the Café Continental and uh, Café Society. Ah, yes. I always like to go in. I think uh, weekends was, yeah, the Continental Bar, going to the beach. It was always nice to go out for. Okay, last question, and I hope you're prepared for this. Bad Boys Inc. or Too Unlimited? There's more to, the, to this world. Yes, Bad man, Boys Inc. That's my man. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to say. Theo, thank you so much. Take good care You're of welcome, yourself. Ali. I'll see you soon. Yes, okay. Bye bye. Mate. Bye bye. <laughs> Don't you just love him? Theo Schnell does. Hall of Fame member and Aberdeen legend. If you haven't already done so, I'd be absolutely delighted if you would please consider subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying today's watch. Been absolutely thrilled to have picked up over 150 new subscribers in the last month. So to all of you who have come on board, thank you so much for your support and I really hope you enjoy the channel going forward. Got big, big, big plans. Right. Let's finish off the show with more of your comments. I'm going to jump over to X. Grey Pilgrim said, This is what our season rests on. We need to get it done tomorrow. I support our players, but not our manager. Hopefully Neil can do something to change my mind. Wayno DJ has said, As always, I hope for the best. However, at the moment, I always fear the worst. On a brighter note, if we do lose, hopefully Warnock walks and we get someone else in. Kevin Smith said, I would sacrifice this game to guarantee safety in the league. Keep relegation for Diddy clubs. <laughs> Dunk Shan said, this is where we see what Warnock is all about. He said he wanted to win the cup, although been saying this for weeks with no improvement. So fingers crossed for the weekend. David Wilson says, come on, boys. I'll be there for you from the first to the final whistle. Let us down again and you'll hear from me. Do the simple things well and stay switched on. We must all stick together and we move on together. Stand free. Okay, so that's all the notifications that came in on X. Let's get back to Facebook. Uh, Graham McLachlan said, Cup game, really important to get through or else it's just focusing on staying away from trouble. I'm keeping the faith, I always do. Still reeling from seeing that net ripple for the second time in Paisley. Hamden calling, come on you Reds. David Buchan, he's another one that says, I don't know why, but I have a sneaky suspicion that we'll play well and actually win. It'll be tight and I'm not betting the mortgage on it, but it's just a hunch. Um, again, so many of you think that. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, Johnny Wilson said, huge game. No more experimenting, Warnock. Back four and width is a must. Darwin Klopp has said, do you know what? I had the fear feeling about this one. However, I think they'll get a win on Saturday. Luck has got to turn soon. We aren't that bad. Have some decent players. So I'm not going to be doom and gloom going for a home win. Stand free, Aberdeen fans. Derek Beattie said, very difficult to be optimistic going into this game, but just got to get behind the lads. What else can you do? Hopefully a bit of magic from Duke, Hoylett or Mayofsky might be enough to get us through. 
Scott Bowie said, a win is now a must. A scrappy 1-0 win, I would take. We need to match them physically as well. George Findlay said, it'll be typical that we win this game and get all excited for a trip to Hamden. Jim Presley makes a good point. He said, if this game does not make them roll up their sleeves and get right into them, get the win and take the pride in wearing the shirt, then they should not be here. Barry Herbertson said, just win and give us all Dons fans a great weekend for a change and a trip to Hamden to look forward to. GW Finlater has said, it would be the most Aberdeen thing to win the Scottish Cup, end years of Scottish Cup heartbreak and also be relegated. Play in Europa League on the Thursday... <laughs> Then away to a broth on the Sunday. <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine? John Stewart said, I'll be there to say goodbye to the old gin, hopefully. I hope you are, John, and I hope he'll, he will forever be in your thoughts, fella. Uh, Alistair Davison said, let's wipe the smile off DM's face and get to a semi even if bottom six I would take a chance of getting to another final and break the heart of hearts and gaining group stages in Europe via a cup win Gavin Bush said I'm not confident if Neil Lennon really wants the job the board should offer to him now he should also be given full control of signings so that he can put a team in the park that he's happy with that is the biggest mistake we're making Let's get it right this summer. The consequences of not getting it right are there for all to see. Paul J. Johnson said he will start the way he lined up against St. Mirren, but won't change it this time. A good win for us and some feel-good factor back. Sammy Sanderson said, I fear the worst tomorrow. Warnock's style of management is well outdated for modern players and it shows. We will need a massive performance from the players, but don't see it coming. Scott Garland says, I can't see us winning tomorrow, but I'll still be there. Graham Watson said, as shown last week, first goal important. If Kelly score first, can't see us getting back into the game. Same formation as last week to start. Gareth Mackey said, the players, whichever one's picked in the Warnock lottery starting 11, need to just try and play good football, which we all know they're very capable of and getting a result. Uh, Richard Mickey McMillan said, come on you Reds, let's do this. Malcolm McLennan, last comment, has said, hopefully the best team selection will be made and those chosen will give their all. Right guys, we are all done. Thank you so much for watching as normal. Thank you for your continued support. You know, the viewing figures and the hours watched in the last 28 days or so have been absolutely phenomenal. Um... And I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. And, you know, we, it, it gives me the strength and it gives me the encouragement to keep going and knowing that I think I'm doing the right thing here. And that's down to your support um, and for you guys watching. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. So where are we at? Again, as I always do, ahead of the game is just wish the lads the very best of luck tomorrow. It's a fantastic opportunity to get to Hamden. It's a fantastic opportunity to put us into a semi-final. A home tie with hopefully a very passionate fan base behind the team that will help them get over the line. Learn the mistakes from the previous three games. Learn the mistakes from the St Mirren game. And as everybody has said, just show some passion and show some pride. I don't think there's much else to say. Let's stop the rot. Let's get a win under our belt and let's just kick start from here. Come on, lads. You can do this. We believe in you. Guys, thank you so much. Stand free. I'll see you on Sunday for the review show. Bye for now.